Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing? You beautiful hummingbirds. Keep flapping those wings because we've got quite an episode. We have quite the nectar to just suck down our gullets. It is an extra special episode with Ryan Kelly, an amazing stand-up comedian. And he's coming to Phoenix, Arizona this week. He's going to be at the Tempe Improv in Tempe, technically not Phoenix. I keep calling Tempe Phoenix. So Stefan, bad, bad hummingbird. But I'll keep flapping those wings and fluttering for you guys. Flutter, flutter, flutter. By the Oh, I didn't introduce myself. My name's Stefan Satani. For all of you guys that were just wondering, where is this voice coming from? Whether aggravating or mellifluous, it's a voice and it's here. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys that have listened so far. If this is your first time, welcome to the crew. Suck up a little bit of those driplets of nectar and stay for the ride. It is so sweet. It's going to get your glucose levels all askew. But hey, that's okay because you're among friends that also have diabetes in this metaphor. But guess what? If you guys want to support this sugar train, keep on chew, chew, chewing to the subscribe button. Click that. Leave a review if you guys haven't yet. That really helps with the algorithms and helps me climb those charts. I'm in the top 100 for top improv comedy in Apple Podcasts. And I'm going to go ahead and read a recent review for you guys. I feel so unprepared because I forgot that I was going to do this. So I am scrambling right now, just scrambling to, to be able to find one. Okay, this recent review, it says six stars. And Trivia Grind says, I recommend this podcast to anyone who needs any kind of advice. I mean, any advice. This covers it all and then some. It will improve your life, your career, and your sense of humor. Learn, laugh, love, as they say. I enjoyed this thoroughly, so I know you will. That's right. Wow. Bravo. What a review. And you can too. If you just head on over to Apple Podcasts, link is in the show notes, if that's not where you regularly watch or listen. And you can just go on over there and just leave old Steph a tasty review for me to gobble up in front of all of you guys. I will mukbang reviews in front of you guys in the very intro of the pod. But thank you for everyone that has done that so far that has followed me on Instagram and TikTok and all that good stuff. You guys are amazing. I just wanted to say, if I don't know how hummingbirds embrace each other, do I just flutter on top of you and then just vibrate on your back? I don't know. You tell me what is comfortable for you, but I am humming with joy and I'm going to keep humming for quite some time because you guys just gave me so much energy. <laughs> Mm. One other droplet of gratitude that I wanted to splash you guys with, just flick on you guys, is thank you to everybody that came out for the Trash or Treasure show. It was a success. It was a big turnout, especially for a Tuesday night. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, is it a Sunday night or Saturday night? What's going on over here, guys? And they're like, Stefan, why are you talking like that? And I said, oh, this is my surprise voice. November 9th is the next Trash or Treasure show. Link is going to be in the show notes. You can click on there. Link is going to be in the show notes to see Ryan Kelly in Tempe this Thursday. And if you're not in Phoenix, he has other tour dates. He's going to be all over the place, just like my pee, as I try to get it all in the bowl. At least that's what my wife says. Anyway, you guys are ready for a treat. So let's just jump into that stream. Here we go. Would you like a formal intro? Would you like to, to like lean into it? How would you like to do it? I, how honestly, whatever you're feeling, I am down to get, get for, uh, if you like, like a former show. Hi, I'm Ryan Kelly. I go by youth pastor Ryan online. No, I'm not a real youth pastor. Yes, I do look like one. It's unfortunate for everyone involved. Uh, and it has gotten way out of hand. So here we are. <laughs> but you know what? I, I love how you own it. Cause the, I've, I've gotten some nicknames in the past as well. And I've tried to steer clear of those. You, mm -hmm. I know your TikTok handle is youth pastor kelly uh or youth pastor ryan and yeah. uh youtube i think your instagram is ryan kelly and kelly comedy? comedy cannot get youth pastor ryan i've actually talked to the guy who owns it he doesn't remember the password for it and then i made a joke about it one time and then the account got reported so much that it's like has problems now and so i'm like no <laughs> oh, yeah man. so it's that's interesting yeah i would love to be youth pastor ryan on uh instagram but here we are um 
That's well, that's so cool. And it's so cool how you took a curse and turned it into a blessing, maybe as a youth pastor would. And I was going to ask, did you always grimace when you were called youth pastor Ryan and then you just started to own it or did you just immediately own it and just go forward from there? I think I definitely grimaced it first and to this day. Um, I think that we just, you know, at a certain point you get to the realization that the way that people see you is the way that you are perceived in the world. And at a certain point, like no matter how much you perceive yourself differently, yeah, lean into it. Like, like, especially for comedy. And and that felt like something I definitely leaned into. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a a very wise thing to do and a very mature thing to do. And I think uh, for me, I, especially with this long hair, I used to look not homeless before, but now (laughs) if I'm on stage, I I will uh, acknowledge the fact that I look like I hand out turkey legs at the Renaissance Festival. (laughs) Very, very medieval vibe going on here. It's, I think it's turning a little bit into Jesus. So maybe this can I, be a, a, a this a, is a weird combination of we've got Jesus and youth pastor Ryan, like, Hey, whatever I am here to spread the word of the podcast. That is what I'm here to do. <laughs> I'm glad that you have heard my call, Ryan. Cause it's been, uh, absolutely. I, I've been <laughs> yeah. It, it, it felt like a really, uh, a heavenly call. And so here I am. <laughs> oh, oh man, what a, what a celestial time we will have. And uh, speaking of celestial, I know you were born in St. Louis, Missouri, and you were almost called to me very soon. I know um, as, a, as a child, you had pyloric stenosis, which took me about an hour to be able to say without stuttering. Um, <laughs> it's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you carried on. You persevered since... The uh, time of birth, you were basically showing some grit here. It's just been all near-death experiences for like all of my life. Like, I mean, yeah, we had pyloric stenosis, but also I was born early. I was induced early with, and I had premature lungs because my dad wanted to go to Vegas. That's not a joke. That's just a real part of my life. Like <laughs> Gambling on more than he thought. Yeah, <laughs> way more than he thought. And uh, yeah, and they, they bet poorly. So yeah, I was in like the little ICU as a baby. They were just like, okay, well, he's not great at this. He's not great at this whole breathing thing. <laughs> and then I know you also, I, I just watched the the story that you told about surviving a plane crash as well, which yeah. I am terrified of heights. I've been trying to conquer some of those fears by doing some things. Like my wife and I, we just went skydiving three weeks ago. Nice. And we went on a hot air balloon a week after that. To be honest with you, the hot air balloon was way more terrifying than skydiving. That makes way more sense to me because so I've been skydiving, but I haven't been in a hot air balloon. But there's something about the hot air balloon, like I don't know, it just feels shifty, and it's it's also like you've got edges all around. I don't like edges personally. I like like once you're falling, I'm like, well, we're falling. But there's something about edges, man. Thank you for articulating that. That might be my fear. I'm afraid of edges and ledges. Mm -hmm. Those things, because I see people and it was a hot air balloon. It was one of the biggest in the world. And so they had, it was this like basket. It looked like you could serve a Subway sandwich on it. And it was, it was um, like cornered. So my wife and I were in a corner and then there were two other people in each corner and about 26 of us. So you see people that are leaning over the edge, taking pictures with their phone. And I'm just like, don't do that. What are you doing? Cause you're going to drop your phone. You're going to fall over. And it's just going to be, it's not going to be good. It's not going to yeah. be good. It's the fear of going to fall, not the fear of falling. Because once I'm falling, like jumping out of a plane, I'm fine. But like edges of cliffs, edges of like things like that. Yeah, man, not not it, not it. <laughs> I, I must confess, um, in, in the spirit of being pastor, I, I, my brother, he liked to go over edges and ledges. And we were at a mall, two-story mall, and he always would peek over and just, bend over and, and I looked like he was going to fall. So one time my wife, my mom was coming back from the gym and she had us in a little daycare. We were little youngins and uh-huh. my brother was leaning into a koi pond and I just Sparta kicked him in. And- <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is fish. Oh, oh man! Damn, if only I got to do it again, just so I could say that line. That's good. right. I got you. Yeah. So, so coy, but anyway, ah. and I ended up just uh, being like, "Well, that's what happens when you lean in." 
and he never leaned again. So sometimes wow. you gotta you gotta learn those lessons. And you were uh, like, I'm here to teach him this lesson, one one thrust kick at a time. Just- <laughs> one other thing I was gonna ask too is, are you? I, I was gonna ask your height because I know I'm similar in my wiry frame, as you have mm-hmm. also mentioned in some of your stand up, which is hilarious by the oh, way oh thank and you can, i appreciate we, that <laughs> and, I, and i can't wait by the way phoenix listeners you guys are in for a treat because ryan's going to be here october 28th at october 28th 8, 8 p.m the 10 p.m Prob. yeah and links guys links if you guys are lost for links i'm gonna have an abundance well it'll be one link really but the other wait, links that yeah. ryan <laughs> wants to i'll put those in there it'll be a picnic basket of pastor ryan links delicious right. links yeah mm. <laughs> the tastiest links Jack's homegrown links. Mm. yeah (laughs) um but i think the question leading up to was how tall are you i am six one and a half nearly six two oh yeah same z's oh really i'm six two yeah yeah yeah. nice yeah very cool so i was gonna say don't ever do a hot air balloon ride because i feel the the basket is like a little below waist so you're so close to that yep and that when that center of gravity is wrong we don't love that. That's not right. Oh no. Uh-uh. Oh no. We're already yeah. we're already susceptible to tipping over. I know that you had told a hilarious story of how you got mugged and it started with a face plant. And uh Yeah. Yeah, man. Just, I tip over. It's, it's not it, good. Same, man. Yeah. Same. Plus, plus we got a lot of distance to fall. That's not good. Like you we hit hard. That's the thing is you can, I think if you're a shorter person, you can have a little more grace and slide into the trip. But if you're tall and I always had a problem with my gait, I always tried to walk with a little bit more swagger than I should. So then when I did hit a crack, I would go like, and a whole, it was like a little chicken trying to (laughs) just like a wiggle. Just a (laughs) way. Oh my gosh. Oh, so, so I definitely feel it. But um, I also, I'm so delighted because one of the things that I've recently found, one of the treasures that I have dug up is the good, the Dan and the Florida man, which ah, is a boys. phenomenal podcast. And I, I started listening from episode one where it seems like you guys have evolved with different segments since then, but you still kept some of the classics like story time where you and other comedians, Dan and Ben, and oh my gosh, their last names escape me, but that doesn't matter because they're not on this podcast. It's Ryan Kelly. That's fair. I, if you need help though, it's Daniel Spencer and uh, Ben Brainerd and oh. they are, they are great. It is so much fun to get to like play with them every week and have fun. You guys have just, and, and you've updated it to having little challenges, scavenger hunts. Um, That's his- what we weren't expecting, is that there is a group that we do not know. There's a group of, I think it's either six to eight of them. And they they go by absolutely not labs because we, during like filling out a form to like submit an email to us, we'll ask for your name. And they just put absolutely not. And so they... That, but there's a group of them that like watch the podcast come together and then create challenges for us. And it is so much fun. We love them so much. And which is a weird thing that I would have never expected happening, like having a podcast, but here we are. So oh, that is incredible. Almost an Illuminati type of vibe. Maybe. Yeah. It, it's got an interesting like susceptibility to some cult tactics. Like it's. Uh... <laughs> has Has anyone ever done Illuminati like N A? U G H T Y because I think if that hasn't been done, that's that's so funny. Oh my gosh, it's just it's just like a a relationship podcast, uh, Illuminati. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Oh, but but you guys have told one segment that you guys have is story time, and I think one of your first stories on the podcast was gut bustingly funny. Um, not to get too close to the uh, pyloric stenosis, but I think <laughs> one uh, one of your stories was you ended up, and you'll you can probably tell us a little bit better than me, but in Missouri going to see your grandmother that that was passing away, and you got caught speeding, and you ended up having a warrant out for your arrest. Yeah, man, it's been a minute since that happened, but yeah. So my my grandma was passing away in April of. Uh, 2020 a real good time you know for everyone with uh, <laughs> uh plus she she did not die of covid i want to I say that i think that's important to know but it's funny because every time i mentioned that time period people are like was she dying of covid it's like no and then when i say no people get disappointed 
Like, like, <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it's so weird, man. I'm always like, why? Why did y'all? Like the other diseases were still happening, and so so she was passing away, and I was driving home, and I was sad. And so I was just oh. speeding a lot, uh, and I didn't realize how much I was speeding until the cop pulled me over, and. He goes, you know how fast you're going? And I go, absolutely, absolutely not. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. And he goes, uh, well, just to put it in perspective for you, the person next to you was also speeding at 85, but you passed them like they were standing still. And I was like, oh, so I was wow. impressive. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and so I, I yeah. I felt like I was setting records, and uh, in in Missouri, he he wrote me he, he he wrote me the ticket. He's like, "Where are you coming from?" I was like, "My grandma's dying." He's like, "Okay, cool." And I was like, "Thanks." Uh, like like said nothing about it. Like was just kind of like, "Yeah, that happens." It's like, "Yeah, I know." Um, oh my me a gosh. ticket Doesn't totally blast me. I think he put me at like eighty nine, uh, which is just where like you're not gonna be arrested. Essentially, I think. Is that how uh, old your grandma was? Uh. It's close. I think she was 86. That would have been poetic if he'd been like, I will write you a ticket for her. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it's too, it might be too soon here. I don't mean to never be. Never too soon. Are you kidding? I had uh, an uncle pass away. Uh, le- like he, he passed away this year. He was 103. When was it COVID? Pa- no, like, <laughs> no. No, I'm sorry to disappoint. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. He was actually passing away of dementia. And and one of the things that I said is as soon as I got the text from my mom, he's like, hey, your uncle died. I go, oh, well, that's kind of fitting because for the last, you know, couple of years, he hasn't known where he is. And now none of us know where he is. And I feel like that's, <laughs> this is how our family is just as soon as something happens, jokes are ready. Um, yes, that's, yeah. that's very much mine as well. We, uh, we, we like to coat our sadness with lots of sugar and lots of humor. It's just, right? it's more it's delicious just, that way. I mean, it, it goes so down much, more easy. easier swallow. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. A spoonful of sugar helps the depression go down. I think just, Mary just Poppins. A, mm, just a little bit of depression. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> interesting though. I will say interesting that you speed when you're sad because in the moments where I've experienced true sad, pure sadness, I slow down. Like I use, I'm a speeder. But then when I'm sad, I catch myself going s- probably 65 and a 65, which normal me wouldn't do. It's not. Yeah, that's not part of the team. Like the, the yeah. yeah, no, I get that. You know, for me, I think that it was just like maybe it's like running away from your problems or it must have been like just wanting to like get something accomplished, like get home. I mm-hmm. think was probably it. But yeah, yeah, I, mean, I don't know why I speed up apparently more and or I just kept it regular, to be honest. I'm not really sure. I I I go fast. But uh, hey, I you, wish I didn't. But no, I, no, I no, no. It's way more badass to do that because now you're more like of a Ryan Gosling character where you're just like, Ugh, and you just, I don't know if you have a drive, stick. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except I don't know how to drive stick. So it's just embarrassing. <laughs> like it's just, just destroying the transmission, putting it in reverse. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he keep throwing it neutral? He thinks it looks cool. Like that's. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did do that in college. I thought it would look cool where my car had the one, two, three. So then uh-huh. I put it in one, two, three. It wasn't a stick shift, but it just had those options. Yep. So, so you just wrecked it. That was, totally yeah, that was the, 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 the <laughs> technician was like, I've never seen something like this before. <laughs> <laughs> I love that when you do something so impressive that a professional in the field goes, how? Like, I mean, that's, <laughs> I love that. I was like, I, you know, Fast and the Furious? Well, I did all the moves that Jason Statham did, but just without the manual stick shift. Without the like, need, you know? Or like the that. need, or the need. Yeah, there was no plot either. It was like, Stefan needs to go to the library now to study. So he's yeah. kicking it into third gear. Yeah. And As you was, do at 25 on a rural street, you know? like just... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Look, man, been, been there. Been there. <laughs> so it's been a wild ride. And speaking of wild rides, I know your life in general has been in a wild ride and you've done so much. I know that you've mentioned that you've had two bachelor's degrees, a master's degree. You worked at Disneyland as Spider-Man, a stormtrooper and entertainment host. Uh, yeah. Did a little bit of modeling. Then you 
uh, well, I don't know chronologically if this is accurate, but you also along the way somewhere uh, picked up stand up and started doing stand up comedy and are going to be at the Tempe Improv October 28th in Phoenix, Arizona, plus other dates. Link will be in the show notes. But my question. <laughs> Thank you. Is, um, uh... <laughs> my question is. How much do you weigh? No, I'm kidding. My, yeah, my right. question <laughs> is, th- these are, it's just all just characteristics. Ridiculous of- questions out of the blue. Just like with all that information, star <laughs> sign, like what? Ha- <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you an Aries? Um, yeah, right. No. So, so I was going to ask all of these cool things that you've done. Have you, what has led you to do them? And the reason that I ask is I have, I've been like uh, a Ryan Kelly light. Just I don't taste as good. No, I'm not as popular, but I've been able to have my passion and curiosity lead me to some cool places. The podcast being one of them, stand up comedy, um, as well as languages. I not a lot of my fans know this. I, I speak Italian and Brazilian Portuguese fluently. And Whoa, even- that's so cool. Oh, thank you. Thank I have you. none of those skills. So anytime I hear people can speak other way, I barely speak English. And so when I hear like that is mind blowing to me. That's amazing. I love it. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I what I taught Italian at an elementary school in Phoenix, Arizona. I lived in Italy for a little while. I did Rosetta Stone. I've I've encountered and done many different language learning techniques and programs. And I feel like to be honest with you, Rosetta Stone is pretty powerful. That's how I learned Portuguese. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's really impressive. That's also really good to know, especially for someone who's been through it, for anyone looking yeah. to learn a language. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I could talk about languages for a long time, but uh, let me ask, if what language would you like to learn if you could learn any language? Uh, Arabic or Chinese? Just oh, because so some they're of the bo- easy ones. But, yeah, literally, just because they're the hardest ones, if I could learn one, uh, I would like to be able to learn one of those yeah that's that's totally fair and i it would be so badass if you know you went to china and you were like ni hao nang hai za, and just started speaking in in mandarin or chinese and would that that would blow people's minds if they see the gawkiest awkward white guy coming towards them and just able to drop into <laughs> fluent chinese i mean that would be people would lose their minds people would explode it would be oh my gosh Oh, it would be amazing. And and to to um circling back slowly cuz when I'm sad I go slower. But the um the f- just following and and learning different things, doing different things, was it uh curiosity that led you there? Was it like, "Hey, I'm going to do I thought about doing this and I'm just going to jump into it?" Or was it more serendipitous where you just kind of ran into different things? I don't know if that question was very clear or not, but No, it it made sense to me. I feel like it's a mix of everything. Uh, which is a very unclear answer to that, but I can explain it. Um, some, some of it, it comes from like bored now, need to do a thing. Uh, what I've discovered, I got diagnosed really late in life with uh, ADHD and a couple other things. And, and it just kind of all made sense that that is where like constant movement came from. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, like all of a sudden I would just decide that I wanted to get good, with, good at things or, or try new things. And then I would just do them. Uh, I am like, I, like I'm able to, uh, I'm, capable as a lock, like picking locks. I can do that. Uh, I can, uh, I'm trained, trained with bow stabs, throwing knives, regular, like hand to hand combat. Uh, I'm a handgun and rifle marksman. I, uh, I do have, I've got actually, they're behind me right now, uh, in the corner, but I got my two bachelor's degrees. Uh, one is in business, one's in international relations, and then a master's degree an MBA with concentration in Homeland security. And so, just a wild and i like for instance i got the master's degree because i was petty uh i don't um Whoa. yeah yeah let me explain get yeah, that i don't know if you've ever ragefully got a master's degree um but you I, and I, was, I experience emotions in such different ways <laughs> <laughs> i yes yeah, i mean to be fair i don't think this is a normal route i think you probably take the healthier approach to like <laughs> processing anger but mine was like I, I was at the time I was working for Disneyland. Uh, I don't speak for the brand or the company. Super important to know, um, uh, <laughs> which, you know, allegedly is now part of their training. Um, uh, no way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, I've, I've heard a couple stories of yours on TikTok stories where you're talking about it and you're like, you, you always start with that. So I was like, man, there's got to be some sort of legal repercussions if you don't say that. So interesting. I mean, hypothetically. Yeah. 
Um, uh, but you, like, you don't, uh, yeah, you don't want to knock at your door and like, ha huh, huh, Ryan yeah. Kelly. Oh boy, <laughs> get in the bag. Like that would be. A- <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Is that why you're trained in uh, in hand combat? It's just to defend from from Mickey. Yeah, it's just uh, I don't have to come for the knees, and then I just um. <laughs> no, I was I was just far before. But it, oh uh, god. Yeah, I was working for Disney and I was, I was kind of like uh, ticked off at the time because of some things that were going on uh, at, at work. And, uh-huh. and they, they, they were now offering something called Disney Aspire, which is actually it's a fantastic program. And they will 100 percent, even if you're just an hourly cast member, they will pay 100 percent for your college education. And yeah, wow. which is great, including books and things like that, like everything. Wow. And so I was like, I'm looking, I'll cost you more money. Like that was literally it. I was just so mad that I was like, I want you to be, to cost more. Like, I want to be more expensive to you. And so I sound like a little bit like me with my stepdad growing up. I was just like, I'm going to cost you so much money, Bill. (laughs) I don't have a stepdad, but if I did, I'd I'd be that angry. And you'd be that level of just, oh yeah, I got this. Um, (laughs) I want the switch and the Xbox. Okay. Why? For my love. Like, that's just, <laughs> yes, you'd absolutely buy it. But yeah, so I was, just, I got the math. It's funny because like, I, I have the degree now and I, it was just, it was out of pure pettiness of just like, yeah, I cost them more money. Uh, that is marvelous. That is the, I wish I could be a little bit more like you. And you know oh, what? That's With so sweet. <laughs> your specific set of skills, I feel like you, I know you say you give off a lot of youth pastor vibes. I feel like you're growing out of it and you're more, you're like young Matt Damon. I felt like a little bit of that's Disney so movie vibes or, or show. It's like sweet life of Ryan and Kelly, perhaps. And you could play both of them. I could. And- absolutely. I play me and my sister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> keep it for fun so, and fresh for some reason i thought it was going to be another guy like machine gun kelly is the only other male ah, kelly yes. that i know yeah yeah <laughs> but, but i like your idea better but it just also sounds like and it, i think it might also be the flannel that's giving it off where you could be some cia operative in the middle of the woods these guys ambush you but you just take a little pocket knife and then slash them all and the power of a pen knife just ha <laughs> like <laughs> So that's really cool. You can actually do that in real life. That's amazing. Well, thanks. Yeah, I got trained in a lot of things that I don't use very frequently, but yeah, always been uh, always been fun. Has there is there something that's still on the bucket list that you want to be able to accomplish in the next? Say, I don't know if you give yourself yearly goals or five year. I usually try five years, but um, mm. anything with the short term plan? Uh, honestly, like I was thinking about this recently, and. Uh, like short-term girl goals as far as like uh like like for instance uh i i would like to be able to i, I want to put more content out there i, I want to i want to travel more efficiently and be able to be mm. home at, at times that i like a lot more because right now i've just been traveling way too much i was gone uh september 8th through october 2nd or 3rd which was just too much and it's not good for like online content and things like that and so i think i want to get back into want to be able to do the shorter series that i do on youtube called yesterday today which is a history based thing because i love history and it keeps it fun uh so i'd I'd love to be able like in the next year i'd like to be able to get the silver playlist on youtube which is 100k um i i am uh, actually fully funded my uh through kickstarter my comedy special girlfriends and girlfriends which will film in march so very excited about that. Yes. Um, and then those are those are the two main things that I'm coming with right now. As far as everything else go, I'm I'm just very excited to kind of see where it goes. I mean, I did not plan on any of this happening. I I started talking to my phone uh two years, it was actually two years ago, five days ago. Uh that Congratulations. I Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I started doing TikTok and then it it just kind of spiraled and escalated here. And it was because of my buddy named Casey. I used to post that essentially, and you'll appreciate this from like a stand-up perspective. Like I didn't have enough time to go uh, do open mics. So I was like, I'm going to post videos on Instagram. And this was before reels or anything. So you you had no growth whatsoever. Um, Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I I could post videos and once they got more likes, would they tested, I was essentially testing material. And he was like, you know, I think these would do really well in this app called TikTok. And I was like, I've never heard of it sounds dumb uh but i'll post one video um and in that first video got like twenty five thousand views and like i had like 
over 5,000 followers. And I was like, this is the most people that have ever seen me ever. And so I was like, I'll do this forever. And here we are. Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, three, and I think you got up to 3.5 million I'm, now. I'm at 3.6 now. Yeah. Because I just had a video pop off, which is funny because it's always those videos that you never expect to do well. But it's sitting at somewhere around 15 million right now. And it was because I went to my buddy Mike's wedding, who I met. I met him online playing video games. And yeah, play Battlefield Bad Company 2, playing games together. I just stood in his wedding. It was really cool. It was a really wholesome moment. It was. I saw the I saw several of those and it was it seemed so nice. Like you you were committed, man. I think you had to drive six hours to West Virginia from So get this, that was a different wedding. I have started doing this thing where I don't know if you, you know this, but I've started doing a thing where I go to strangers' weddings. People will invite me all the time to their weddings. And so I've got, I've got a list uh, on my computer where people can submit things and it all goes to that list. I've got over 850 submissions to weddings and oh, I'm trying to go to as many as I can. Obviously it's expensive. No one has paid me to go to these. It's just, I get to show up and make people smile. And I did drive to West Virginia for one. Uh, I have been to what the very first one was in Chico, California. It was just, a, it, it all started with this girl who DM'd me on Instagram. Her name's Shay. Mm -hmm. She's delightful. Uh -huh. She just goes, Hey, my boyfriend just broke up with me. We'd already RSVP to go to a wedding. So I have a plus one. Was there any chance that you just want to go? And I thought, gosh, that sucks that like that happened. I can totally make this fun. And, <sighs> and so I just went with her and it was close. And so it was like a two hour drive. And I was like, absolutely. And she goes, what, really? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I got nothing to do that day. And so we went to a wedding and I sent, I like did it vlog style. And, and it was just fun to like, to be there and she had a great time. We had a great time together. Um, just a very cool thing where I was like, and then all of a sudden it, it, that video took off and I was like, oh, people just wanna see you having fun with other people. I feel like that's the baseline for like a lot of standup or videos just in general. It's like, people just wanna see other people having fun. Um, yeah. Because then, it, then they feel like they're having fun, so yeah. Yeah, I think there's, it, it almost seems like there's some sort of philosophical or biblical tie-in. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if there, if you look, read scripture backwards, it says, you know, TikTok success equals people having fun as yeah, well. Have so the most fun. Yeah. Have the, the most fun. But that is so cool. I feel like a movie could be created out of that where you're just. People work. joke that it's like uh, the male version of 27 dresses. Like I'm 27 suits. Um, 27 yeses. 27. You, yeah. Oh, that's so. That's. Oh, man. You nailed that one. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I. It, it is. It's, it's a weird mix of like 27 dresses and yes, man. Where it's just like, yeah, no, I can do this. I want to go. And, and I have been. It's, it's, it's so much fun because it's like, there's definitely like, I feel like potential for a movie to be made about it. But at the same time, I am have, having so much fun living it. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you always see like those movies about like, catch me if you can, or yeah. like other things like that, where it's like, oh, wow. They like, the movie's cool, but someone lived it. And it's, it's really fun right now being the guy living it. So that's been yes. cool. Oh, uh, that is <clears throat> absolutely delightful. And so cool to be able to live and and experience it's not just you're having the most fun with people you're you're also getting to share and i know you kind of alluded to this too but like you're sharing in some of the best moments of people's lives yeah that's super... so, something that no matter what they will remember for the rest of their lives like like this is this is no matter like you know hopefully we, we would love to imagine that all marriages end really positively but you know divorce <laughs> or or in love forever they will always remember their wedding and whether and if you're there or not, they they can always still remember it as a good time. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's there's definitely been times where like I've been at weddings that are more stressful and things like that. And I kind of weirdly become this like gesture figure, like like huh. like, like just that's just like I'm here to make people smile. And then and then I, most of the time people are really receptive to that. And I feel like sometimes it's just needed. And that's kind of that's the that's the path that I walk right now. It's been really fun. So it's it's almost I don't even know how to say this in. Yeah. It's it's like wedding crashers, except so nice and so j pure and so tender. Oh, like, yeah, I, that's what it feels like getting to do it. It's just like a, it's like a, taking soft hands and just being like, hey, let's help you celebrate your day. Like, let's hold this up, you know, instead of, you know, just going there and blacking out and getting yeah, Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. <laughs> Great film. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very entertaining film, but um, a little devious in their uh, in their intentions. Little shenanigans. Yeah, so, yeah. 
Oh, man. Well, it's been a pleasure and a delight being able to open up the picnic basket of Ryan Kelly. Thank you for sharing some of your treats. That sounded worse than I intended it to be. But um, th- thank you for um, all that that really cool information and a little bit about your life. I feel... Of course. I feel... Mm, my tummy is almost full. We're going to wind down with dessert, which is answering some questions. Oh, I love question time. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to dive into it. Oh, actually, I've got a segment here where I like to get nice and inspired with an inspirational quote. Ryan, I don't know if you're an inspirational quote guy, but uh-huh. do you have any inspirational quotes that <clears throat> just off the top of your head that you kind of lean to if you're having a dark day? Maybe if you are about to die in a plane crash or, or out of oxygen and when you're scuba diving. I, I can tell you a quick thing that happened on the plane crash that I don't tell during the story because it's too serious. Um, the plane crash, some people, uh, we, we talk about it and they're like, did this really happen? Or like the flight attendants would say that. It's like one of those things where it's like, hey guys, I don't know how to tell you this, but when people are dying, they do a lot of crazy things. And so, because one of the yeah. things is the flight attendants came running through the cabin going, call your loved ones, call your loved ones, call your loved ones. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I was on the plane with my loved ones. Uh, but it was crazy because there was uh, there was a woman sitting next to our row, and then there were women sitting next. Or there was a woman sitting next to my parents who were sitting right behind me. Mm-hmm. Um, that one, the woman sitting next to my parents, was like probably in her late seventies, early eighties, and uh, she's sitting there. She's going over like I. She she said out loud and was talking to my mom who was trying to comfort her. She's like, but no one knows my bank passwords. She was. It's weird the the things you think about when you're dying, like. Oh. Yeah, very, very, very heavy moments um, that are going on. There was a woman Ooh. who sat next to me. She was in a green cardigan and a maroon shirt. And I will always remember her because she was so peaceful and so <clears> calming <throat> through this whole thing. I remember her taking a call and then being sweet with me and then like taking a call because my little brother passed out next to me because whenever he gets scared or nervous, he just KOs. Um, <laughs> he's like a possum. <laughs> and then and I'm there, but I, I, I'd been afraid of flying. And for some reason, it was, it was an old show in the History Channel that used to come on every night before I flew. It was called Air Emergencies. And for some reason, I'd watch it because I'm really dumb. Uh, <laughs> and I turned around to my parents. And when we thought that it was over, like when it was getting close, I yeah. turned around and go, ha, and to think I would just got over my fear of flying. And they laughed. <gasps> and oh I... God. I turned around and went silent because I wanted my last words to be a joke. I knew in that moment that that was the thing that meant the most to me was jokes and laughter and comedy. And so for me, the thing that probably changed my life for a lot of reasons was that plane crash and the fact that like, it feels like most people don't know what they're dying for. We know people think that we know what we're living for, but what would you die for? is the question. What would you go out with? And for me, I knew. I knew exactly what that was. And here we sit today. So I guess find out what you're dying for. Wow. Damn. That's a beautiful one. Very deep. It's, I, I, you know, I can't remember why this sparked this, this thought, but I remember my wife and I, I love her very much. And we were talking about finances and stuff and bank, speaking of bank passwords, I have started to give her the apps because we share our finances because I'm like, fuck it. I mean, I'm I'm all in with her. We're yeah. we're doing this. And uh and so I was I was like, okay, giving her instructions of if I die, here's our investment account, here's our bank account. They don't have anything in them, but you know, just the fact that but you know, to have the account, you know, there's still FDC uh, IC insured, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If something goes terribly wrong, you might get a payout. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. I also Quick question. You guys were able to make calls while you were up in the air? That's how low we were. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I was wondering, is the reason that we're not allowed to use our cell phones because you have to make space for the plane crashes? Uh, yeah. Kind of, so, yeah. Just, just, to, just to move the towers. No. Um, <laughs> oh, God. We, uh, yeah. So, so a couple of things about that. Uh, the reason why you're not supposed to make uh phone calls while on planes is because uh, the waves that are coming out of that, uh, like radio waves and cellular waves, they can yeah. mess with the uh, the plane's waves as it tries to communicate with the ground. That's oh, that's why you're not supposed okay. to do it. Uh, okay. okay. doesn't always, sometimes, you know, people can get on their phones, um, but you have to be really low because really your, your phone is constantly searching from tower to tower. That's actually what the bars on your phone mean. I don't know if you know this, but it's not about speed. It's about how, the distance to a tower. 
believe it or not. Oh, I did not know that. Surprise. Yeah, I know. It's a weird thing. And That's... so there's that. Um, and what, what was happening is because we were getting up into the air, but we were uh, we were having like cabin, like pressurization problems. Uh-huh. We couldn't go really high. Otherwise, we were going to lose cabin pressure. So they were keeping us really low. And so that's why they said, call your loved ones, call your loved ones, is because first off, the flight tenants were totally panicking. And uh, and second, uh, we were low enough that we could. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. And you guys landed in Newark, right? So- the scariest part of the whole thing. We had to go back to New Jersey. Oh, God. Um, uh- <laughs> yeah, that's, that's horrible. I ended my wife and I, we lived in Elizabeth, which was like five minutes from the Newark airport for five oh, oh. years. Oh, no way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So maybe we heard you guys. I don't know. There was a little crash. There might be an overlap. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear a really big boom? Uh, <laughs> really? I guess it's more of a thud, but yeah. 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 That's normal. It's at New York airport. Anything can happen. Right. Uh, but not the good things. It's like the opposite of Disneyland. So it is, yeah, it's a magical place in a really negative way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of dark magic there. The Illuminati is definitely. Naughty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that's great. So um, I've got an inspirational quote, too. This is actually, it's not by any person whatsoever. It's by a robot. And then its name is Inspirobot. And so its main purpose, it was designed to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and mash them together for an inspirational quote. I love that. I love that so much. Well, (laughs) wait till you hear the quote. Maybe you might not love it so much. (laughs) So um, I actually, so this quote that Inspirebot generated for me, you can just go right on over to inspirebot.io and click and it'll generate a quote for you. It says, there's a clear correlation between spontaneity and having irritable bowels. And that's it. That's all the quote. Oh, poetic. Really, um, really gets the guts moving on that one. Uh... <laughs> It's a gut wrencher. I I think, I mean, I think literally there might be a little bit of truth to this, especially for Americans. I don't know how others choose to uh, live their lives, but I feel like if you go on adventures, you usually will spring for a menu that you usually wouldn't eat. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. I I do not know very well the Taco Bells and the Jack in the Boxes within a five mile radius, but in uh springfield illinois oh man there's a oh, jack do you know him uh, is that oh he yes college? intimately no 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 I, I actually went to a, an impromptu road trip um and ended up getting really drunk i'm making up this story because i made up springfield illinois but tempe arizona <gasps> let's tempe I arizona knew, okay because i knew for like springfield missouri and i was like i'm sure there's springfield illinois and i'm pretty sure it was across the river and i was just like yeah let's go for it um uh, <laughs> Oh, that's great. All right. Well, now that we're fully inspired, our co- our goblet overfloweth with inspiration. I think we're ready to be able to tackle these questions. Sounds good. Okay. So this first one, it's from Reddit. It says, I need to write a five-page college essay about a food from my culture, but I'm 100% white American. I don't really have a food from my culture. I'm not really sure what to say. I didn't have an Italian mom that taught me how to make pasta or anything like that. The exact words from the assignment are, describe your connection to your cultural history through the food. I don't know what to tell you, man. I was raised on Hot Pockets and Lunchables. I hope this doesn't sound insensitive or offended anyone in any way. I just genuinely don't know what to do. (sighs) Oh, I actually love that question. I I mean, I feel like there's two routes you can go with that by the way you wrote it there's either do exactly that like be like like make it make it a white trash story you know what i mean like like everything was made like just take jeff fox where these things of like all of our salad bowls were were like said cool whip on the side like you could really lean into that um i think think that's a great idea that's a fantastic idea because that's what you know and i mean there is some sort of if you go to your friend's house, it's pure Italian. If you're like, "Hey, uh, Mama Setani, do you have any hot pockets?" and she's like, "Mamma mia, no, we've got the fazool and we've got the uh, chicken." We have real chow. things, yeah. yeah, yeah. So then you could be like, "Well, Mama Setani, at my house we have hot pockets, and we've had them for many generations. They have the ham and cheese, they have the cheddar and broccoli, and you know you can get her interested." 
in your type of food from your if you're looking for a healthier approach they've got lean pockets i mean just keep well you've got we've got diversity we've, in that we've yeah. got more pockets than cargo shorts at our house <laughs> <We're> just... <laughs> a depth um uh, that so. or honestly i think it'd be really funny if he did uh american foods but the foods that people think are from other countries that are american like fortune cookies uh like i'm pretty sure egg rolls uh <laughs> like french fries like like if you just did like all american foods that have other names to them be like it's american baby we got this like <laughs> Dude, I love that. Conquering the foods and claiming them for America, which, yeah, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Right, it's like, yeah, I want to say it's like 1906 that it was invented. Uh, the fortune cookie was invented in San Francisco. It's like, well, that's not a Chinese invention. That's just, <laughs> it's part of Chinese food now, but like. But it's uh, American. It is, it is American. Yeah, it's it's distinctly American. Yeah. Oh. By the way, just a quick question. Ryan, what did you grow up eating? Did you guys have, were you a pocket family or were you a. Uh, kind of varied uh to be completely honest uh my dad really likes italian food so we'd have that occasionally i'd love i love sandwiches so much that makes me really happy uh so things that people don't know is that like uh i'm ethnically uh jewish not fully but i've, I've got that so like uh we've got you know lox bagels uh matzo ball soup things like that um yeah but other than that pretty pretty standard issue american like burgers and hot dogs and yeah that classic classic yeah, apple American pie soup. and all that mm -hmm. like hot dogs. really good chocolate cakes mm. yeah my, yeah. my, my aunt surely can make a chocolate cake that was just, mm, fantastic oh uh, yum and yeah to, what for breakfast did you guys have cereals did your parents allow you the sugary treats yeah you know what i almost never really ate breakfast even as a kid was not a breakfast guy yeah wow but, intermittent but fasting before it was cool absolutely just wanted to you know there's six-year-old me just like, yeah, let's, let's get pumping. Uh, <laughs> Mom, is this sandwich keto? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mom, is this goldfish vegan? Be honest. Like, that's... Oh, fantastic. All right. Well, I feel like um, this person this person is definitely satiated with the wisdom we've imparted upon them. So, so we can go on to the next and last question. It says, <clears throat> so my girlfriend has my dad's number. So I sent a screenshot to my girlfriend and in it, has my dad's phone number, which I didn't realize. She asks if that's his number, and I proceed to say no, and I unsend the screenshot, but apparently she saved it and now has his number. To clarify, that was his number. I just didn't want her to have it. I don't know why, but this bothers me. Am I being unreasonable? She said she won't delete it, as she says it's best she keeps it in case I'm in trouble. There, There is so... As... Oh, man. I got a lot of things that I think about this. Um, please. First please. off, my new, my new special is called Girlfriends and Girlfriends, where I talk about like dating history and things like that. I just walk through my dating life because it's been as insane as the rest of my life, um, which is very telling. Um, <laughs> but it's one of those things where I'm thinking, man, it sounds like you don't trust her. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds like you don't. And that's not healthy. And then also at the same time, like, I, I think she's got a valid point of like, wants to keep the number in case of emergencies, but if you don't want her to have it, I also don't think that that's right of her to force keep that. You know what I mean? Like that's a very weird thing. She might, she might have the most noble reasons, but if it is something that makes you uncomfortable, like, yeah, there's, yeah, I don't know what you could, but here's the thing, totally unmarried dude over here. What are your thoughts? Like, cause you, you've got, you've done it. You have achieved, you know, <laughs> like, oh, you're absolutely right. And I mean, one of the first things I asked my wife after, will you be my girlfriend is what is your dad's number? Because <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure she was safe in all situations. And uh, uh -huh. that she yeah, wasn't or you trouble. could reach out for like birthdays and holidays and know exactly what to get her. Right. Exactly. And when I was ready to ask for her mono in marriage, I was able to, uh, you know, give him a call. That was the best, by the way, because he lives in Brazil. And Whoa. so I got to FaceTime ask for his daughter's hand in marriage and she was right next to me. And I, I remember when I actually went to go see him in Brazil and he was like, I mean, what the fuck could I have said? I Right. That's what I was thinking, especially if she's next to you. Oh, my God, <laughs> yeah. dude, you set that up perfectly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I set all the chess pieces in there and I just looked at him with that checkmate glint in my eye. And he was she's, like, yeah, of course. Gotcha. Go ahead. She loves me. <laughs> like, <laughs> call you later there father-in-law yeah. so i think that 
to that point, if my wife asked for my dad's number or got my dad's number. It's weird the way she saved it. You know what I mean? It's weird yeah. that she immediately took a screenshot. Like, how did she know that you were going to unsend it? And how did... Ah, right, no. right, 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 right. I think I think the the thing that I'm thinking is when you sent it, it's kind of weird that you got really protective and be like, I don't want you to have his number. Yeah. But if you were like, no, I don't want you to have his number. And then she's like, no, no, no. I want his number. That raises, it's like red flags on both sides. It is. I am like, like, it just seems like, hey, you guys might be really, really nice people, but you definitely don't trust each other. And like, that's maybe, maybe this isn't the relationship. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just might, yeah, you guys might want to step away. Right. I, you know, I think sometimes couples counseling could help. So if you guys want to call your dad and have yeah. him mediate <laughs> the whole situation, that might be the best thing for you. I hope he's a therapist. If not, you know, call her dad. There's always options. <laughs> uh, call both the dads. Let's get all the dads involved. So as can... many dads as possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get your friends' dads. Get the dads group, the, the coalition. Get of the pops. dad group chat. We know it exists. <laughs> yeah. It's just jokes and and someone not getting the milk. We know that like... <laughs> Oh, man. Well, speaking of milk, we have uh, dairied all we could, and we were super bold, but we've gone to the end of this podcast. And mm, that was a weird, that was not an easy pour, but... Um, <laughs> milk and uh, me. Uh, but, yeah, I got you. <laughs> but, uh, many curdles in this, but Ryan, thank you so much for joining this podcast. Really appreciated having you on and chatting with you. Of course, man. Thanks so much for having me. This was delightful, and... I'm just happy to be here. Thanks so much for thinking of me. And I hope all the best for the podcast and everything going forward, man. Oh, thank you so much. And likewise, and I wanted to ask, what, I, I know we talked about the Phoenix show uh, October 28th at the Tempe Improv. Sorry, mm -hmm. Tempe, technically. Um, yeah. And link will be in the show notes. But other than that, you know, what have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Where can people follow you? All that good stuff. Gotcha. Everything is linked in my website at youthpastorryan.com. Spelled exactly like it sounds. Uh, don't spell pastor wrong. It's really embarrassing when people comment that. I'm, it makes me laugh a lot. Uh, Youth Pastor Ryan on TikTok. Uh, Ryan Kelly Comedy on Instagram. Uh, I've got shows coming up. Uh, Tempe, obviously, on the 28th. Uh, and then I've got, uh, what's it called? I've got uh, Washington, D.C., the D.C. Comedy Loft, uh, November 4th through 6th. And then I've got uh, City Winery was just added on uh, November 29th in New York City. And I'm very excited about that. Pier 50. One, one of 56, 57, one of the peers. It's going to be awesome. Very excited. Oh, fabulous. That sounds incredible. Well, awesome. Thanks. Oh, and also if you do want, it's, it's ways out, but I will be filming my, uh, my special girlfriends and girlfriends at March 5th in St. Louis, Missouri. And I'm so excited. about. I that. was, I, I was curious on where you were going to film that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, thank you for satiating me with you, with that answer. Thank I got you. you. Yeah. Going back to my hometown. Uh, one, it's, it tends to be better than big cities as far or like bigger cities as far as like COVID goes just because we got less people um which is which is nice for like if we want to keep numbers down so that people don't have to wear masks during the show which would be uh you know you know for, from comedy perspective like it's just so it, you want to see yeah. people smiling you want to see people laughing especially right. if we're filming right um right. yeah so that's uh that's what we got and that's why it's there and it's gonna be awesome that is so cool are you gonna film the intro driving to to go to the special and you're speeding you get pulled over and they say there's a warrant out for your arrest there's a warrant and i lie that this time my grandma's dying again and then I, <laughs> <laughs> this time it's a lie yeah <laughs> and that's the episode thank you so much my gratitude is extends itself over you i want to suffocate you just grab you around the neck with gratitude and shake you because i'm so grateful thank you for listening to the whole thing i really appreciate it and if you haven't yet please subscribe leave a review follow me wherever you can and come see a show come see a live show i'm going to be at the house of comedy the 9th of november link will be in the show notes go see ryan as well support him give him some love give that love because i know you've got it it's deep burrowed inside you but if you dig it up that love is just going to come throbbing out and come out throbbing and don't let it be robbing anyone of happiness. Let it actually give, like Robin Hood, stealing from you and giving to the poor.
something like that. Got lost in the metaphor, but hey guys, big old hug. Love you guys. Gooch, smooch.